Chucky was a fifth installment in an already successful horror franchise. Editor Bertie here, this part of the video sucks, so I'm going to make a separate video just on Chucky himself because he does deserve his own video, but I am making the initiative to just cut part three up completely. Hello, you beautiful f***ing nerds. I hope you have all had a good week. As promised, we'll be talking about Chucky and the uh, Child's Play series this week, uh, starting from the original trilogy and going all the way to the current, which is the second season of The Chucky Show. I hope you all like the moody aesthetic. Now, the Child's Play series has been through a lot. I'm sure we all know that it initially started out as somewhat a unique concept for the time of the late 80s. The first Charles play and the following Charles play 2 and 3 are all telling the story of serial killer Charles Lee Ray tormenting a child, Andy Barclay. That's just about as simply as I can summarize the trilogy. It gets a lot more complicated from there on. Let's get the obvious, or not so obvious, I've been oblivious to this for the first six years until, like, three days ago. Charles Lee Ray, or Chucky, is stuck in a body he doesn't want, and is willing to kill multiple people to be in the correct body that he desires. Chucky is under constant torment within himself for being stuck in the wrong body. Yeah, I only just found that out three, three days ago, I know. I'm oblivious to this sort of shit. I'm stupid. Whether it's intentional or not, a, a clear interpretation can be made that Chucky is an allegory for a transgender person. I know what you're thinking. It was the 80s! Writers weren't smart enough to, to, to which I say, look at this beautiful man. This is Don Mancini. Mancini? Mancini? The creator of the Charles Play franchise and a gay man. Now I know that that doesn't mean that his intentions writing the initial films were queer-natured. Quite the opposite, in fact, as the original truly really plays it quite safe. But the later films, which he wrote, have more and more queer and gay characters in them. Seed of Chucky Alone is about gender identity, a film that Don Mancini wrote and directed for the first time. Like I've just mentioned, the first three films in the series play it quite safe, yet it's not free from any queer subtext in the slightest. The main thing I've mentioned is of course the transgender reading of Chucky, however there is plenty in the first three films that a queer viewer can resonate with. Child's Play, 1988, Andy is being raised by a single mother having no father figure in his life. It can be concluded that the reason he gets so attached to Chucky, despite knowing that he's different from a normal good guy doll, kid's smarter than he looks, is due to his constant search and seeking of approval from any father figure he can get. In his unfortunate case, this is a serial killer. Child's Play 2? I need to get this off my chest before we start. Child's Play 2 is god tier when it comes to slasher films. I recommend everyone who hasn't seen it go watch it right now. Turn off the video, go watch Child's Play 2, then come back and watch the rest of the video. I will know. And let me know how good it is. Objectively, there's an argument to be made. Anyway, Child's Play 2 focuses on rejection from new environments and further develops Andy Barclay's character. A recent article on the topic by Amanda Mazzillo, Mazzillo? Mazzillo? I could never pronounce these flippin' names. Concludes, The queer lens is prominent when Andy finds Phil and Joanne talking about him. Phil says, you have to admit, he's a very troubled little boy. He hasn't come to terms with his with this doll thing. Andy enters the room, keeping himself hidden as his foster parents discuss his problems. This scene demonstrates queer youth being seen as troubled for acting differently. See, even back in the early 90s, Mancini knew what he was doing. This is, of course, one interpretation, but considering what Mancini will go on to do with the franchise in the future, it makes it slightly more difficult to argue that at least some of the queer readings weren't intentional. 
Charles Play 3 plays even more to a queer reading as it is set in a military school, as Andy kept being rejected by his foster homes. Does this ring a very gay bell for you at all? Ding, 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 ding. I thought not. It didn't ring it for me. The film outlines the hypocrisy of military schools designed to make boys more masculine and turn them into men, even though they have female students. Nonetheless, Charles Play 3 continues to keep Andy as the main character, and while not painting him as gay, as he romances one of the other female students. The film does reference masculinity and what makes a man. The little boy Tyler is caught playing with the Chucky doll and is criticised for doing so, as playing with dolls is by no means manly. The original trilogy isn't nearly as experimental or nuanced, at least through a queer lens, as the subsequent entries in the franchise. Despite this though, there is a lot of charm to these films, elements of dark humour and the torment that Chucky is placing on Andy. It is very entertaining to watch as, as dark as that sounds. That sound, that, that's maybe a little bit... Hmm. Chucky at the end of the day is a serial killer doll, and self-awareness for how absurd the idea is in the films makes the experience better. While none of these films take themselves too seriously, the first three films feel a lot darker and more horror. One of my favourite moments, and I'm not alone in this one, is where Chucky scares a guy to death in part three. It does play to the self-awareness of the whole thing. It is pretty absurd that a killer doll is, who's been possessed is murdering people in a military school. It's getting a little bit dark in here. Cool. Purple. There you go, we're purple to represent the gay. Z gays? Stab, stab, stab. Bride and Seed of Chucky go hand in hand. I personally love how this franchise can be separated into different arcs each time this story was rebooted. We've got the original trilogy, much darker and much more horror. Bride and Seed of Chucky, which are wacky, self-aware comedy horrors, then Curse and Cult of Chucky, which go back to being horror. And finally, the modern Chucky era with the TV show, which is a combination of pretty much everything, but I'm getting ahead of myself. As I've started to say, Bride and Seed of Chucky go as their own side story, and yes, Bride is definitely the better film of the two in terms of filmmaking standards. Yes. At the success of Wes Craven's Scream came Universal Studios' sh Studios is shot at the self-aware horror. And were they successful? Yes, the film is a worthy soft reboot to the series. It expands on the lore by introducing Chucky's ex-girlfriend Tiffany, who we later find out that he, she was the reason... Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself again. And maintains Chucky as a psychopathic driving force to the story. But what does Bride of Chucky bring to the table through a queer lens? You didn't ask, but I am so glad that you asked. While Bride doesn't go full force into queer representation, it, def it is definitely there in the film. Don Mancini strikes again. One of the first characters we meet, David, is a gay character who is accepted by his friends, which, you know, wasn't really common in the late 90s. Would you believe it? As we've discussed in the previous video, James Whale... Wait, was that part cut out? Anyway, James Whale, the director of Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, was a revolutionary queer filmmaker who also just so happened to be openly gay. The reason this is relevant is because Don Mancini refers to Bride of Frankenstein not only with the title of this film being Bride of Chucky, but even having Bride of Frankenstein rep presented to us on screen just before Tiffany is violently murdered. I mean, we all know Jennifer Tilly is very much a queer ally, just look at our filmography. Bride of Chucky explores how a non-conventional couple, this being Chucky and Tiffany, may fight and bicker just as a usual couple would. Well, their relationship is heterosexual in terms of actual sex. Uh, a lot of the human characters in the film are confused and caught off guard at the presence and display of the relationship between these two. An argument can be made that Chucky and Tiffany's relationship can represent that of a non-conventional queer couple. We've made it! Seed of Chucky is finally here. No one's ever said that before. Seed of Chucky is now the fifth installment in the franchise. Is this film bad? Depends who you ask. Most people would say yes, and even more people would say it should burn in hell. Putting aside all that quirky weird stuff, 
wait, this is a queer film by every definition. Seed of Chucky is a, definitely is a film. I think the main reason the film fails with general audiences is the lack of true horror in the film. It has horror elements, but it leans in the wrong direction of comedy. It, it completely derails the already established tone that these films had up to this point. Bride of Chucky adjusted the tone to be more self-aware and included more black comedy, which was fine at the time because it was still a horror film, but it didn't stray nearly as far from the established tone made apparent in the original trilogy. Well, this film completely leans into comedy and has very minimal horror. Truth be told, and honestly speaking, Don Mancini was probably ahead of his time with this film. Sure, it may have killed the franchise for almost a decade and made it go straight to video with the next two films, but this film has values. Back in my day, my films had queer representation before we even knew about it. Seed of Chucky is definitely a film, I've said that already. The main queer takeaway from this film is Glenn slash Glenda, and the film has a very non-conventional narrative for modern cinema. Seed of Chucky is filled with queer undertones, not just in terms of subtext, but in terms of overt and explicit exploration of a queer character. Yet instead of focusing on homosexual ideology, the film shines light on gender roles, expectations, and most importantly, the result of queer character. In the case of Glenn slash Glenda or Glenn or Glenda, it's important to say that the child's double naming of Glenn and Glenda is a direct reference to Edward's Glenn or Glenda from 1953. Edward was a queer director as well, there's a correlation there. The relation of the child's double naming is in relation to their gender being undetermined due to the lack of correct anatomy to identify, which in itself could be regarded insensitive to a transgender audience who lacks the sexual anatomy associated with their gender. Somewhat of a conclusion can be drawn that to be male or female, one needs to have the correct anatomy, which is, we all know is just wrong. Don't. I can see, no. Come back to the video. Seed of Chucky can easily be interpreted in a positive light for the queer and transsexual community. In fact, it has as the second season of The Chucky Show brings back the beloved, arguably beloved, characters of Glenn and Glenda, both played by non-binary actor Lachlan Watson. While the film may not be considered good to a straight cisgender audience, and to be fair, it may still not be considered good by queers, it definitely has earned its place in the queer community for having the balls to put a gender fluid doll murdering people in an already ballsy franchise that already had full films before then. I, I realise that I'm holding the Chucky doll for the entire video, which isn't my intention. I was just going to hold him for the intro, but now I've done like 60% of the video and I've been holding him the entire time. And if I put him down now, some people are going to be disappointed that he's no longer with me. So. This is where it gets good. Again. It's always been good. What are you talking about? Curse of Chucky is back to basics. No big Hollywood actors or elaborate kills, car chases or guns. Maybe save for a couple of Hollywood actors. Curse of Chucky puts Chucky in a mansion with people for him to kill. You know, if it wasn't for this film, we wouldn't have The Chucky Show today. The film stars Brad Dourif's daughter, Fiona Dourif, playing Nika Pierce. A character that was born paralysed due to reasons involving Chucky. The film expands on the lore by introducing more characters who are now involved with the mythos. It is also a direct sequel to Seed of Chucky, as Chucky still has his scars from that one time he got into an intimate relationship with a fan. Through a queer lens, Curse of Chucky starts to implement main characters as queer now. The sister of Nika, Barbara, is bisexual, and we don't find this out until we see that she cheats on her husband with the babysitter. But up until this point, we are led to believe that it is the husband cheating with the babysitter, as the soap opera level cliche goes in these films. But Mancini subverts these expectations expertly. It is never once implied that Barbara is bisexual, which it shouldn't be, as sexuality is often not visible in a person. People just get a feeling that X person is gay. 
The straight audience is stupidly led to believe that there is straight cheating going on. Not in my Chucky film, there isn't. There is no straight cheating, only gay cheating going on in my Chucky film. Nonetheless, Curse of Chucky is a worthy entry, and while it is a soft reboot, it still maintains the same continuity as Tiffany shows up at the end. Now, of course, possessing Jennifer Tilly's body. It gets a bit convoluted. Curse is one of the very few horror slashers to stick to the same continuity 25 years after the first film. The other one that comes to mind is Scream. And the same continuity goes on to this day, 35 years later, after the first film. Film number seven. Cult of Chucky continues Nika's story after she is determined insane following the events of Curse, and not surprised there. Now, through a queer lens, cult may not seem so queer on the surface. The most notable gay character in the film is Carlos, one of the nurses in the asylum Nika is kept at. Carlos embodies traditional masculinity. He is assertive and strong, and the patients know to keep a distance from him. I think Manzini knows exactly what he is doing here throwing a gay character into the film who goes against every stereotype that would be associated with the queer man in a horror film. Time to talk about how Mancini also paints straight cisgender white men as the cause of every problem. Yes, Nika's psychologist, Dr. Foley, is quite a Foley man indeed. When we first meet him, he definitely seems like he wants the best for Nika, as well as the other patients. He does what any sane man would do and dismisses Chucky as being real. Although the number of people claiming he is alive is growing, um, you start to think of the credibility if multiple completely unrelated people claim this doll is alive and murdering people. This only does just get worse in the show as more people find out and more killings happen. Dr. Foley, despite being shown concrete evidence by Andy, who is, yes, back in the films now, it gets so convoluted. Uh, dismisses the doll being alive. Later on in the film we find out that he has been sexually harassing Nika for years by hypnotizing her and making her forget everything when she next wakes up. So not only is the white cisgender man a rapist, he is also dismissive of concrete evidence when presented to him on a silver platter. I mean it could be argued that the reason he's dismissive is because he wants to keep Nika around but then is kind of surprised when the Chucky dolls start murdering him. Yes, there are multiple of them. Like I said, it gets a bit more convoluted, but this isn't a recap video of the franchise. This is about queer interpretations. Chucky splits his soul to multiple dolls. I'm not here to talk about the quality of this film. Who am I kidding? I mean, I am. This film is good. It definitely feels fresh and honestly I'm surprised it took this long for the franchise to get to a mental asylum. There are a couple of really good moments in the film where I, where even I questioned whether Chucky is back or not, or if Nika has actually gone completely insane. The film doesn't linger on this aspect long enough for it to have any impact and from a meta perspective of course we know Chucky is actually back, but it's intriguing to think about nonetheless. To quote Amanda again, in Cult of Chucky, Tiffany shows romantic interest in Nika, who is being possessed by Chucky. This interest in a woman with Chucky's soul explores Tiffany's bisexuality. Throughout the franchise, Chucky's sole goal is to possess a human. He finally succeeds by possessing Nika. The confidence Chucky feels in Nika's body opens up questions about his place in the queer community. Is Chucky as misogynistic as we thought? Does Chucky feel at peace in Nika's body? The romance between Tiffany and Chucky slash Nika is an electric one. When Chucky slash Nika says, so this is different, Tiffany replies, works for me, establishing her acceptance of a romance. So we definitely can see a lot of queer ideology and acceptance in the film. Curse and Cult are the only Chucky films in the franchise where Chucky definitely wins. It's interesting to think about this. It's always implied in previous films that he would come back, save for maybe the first two? But he's always defeated or killed in every film up until Curse and Cult. In these two, he wins both times. And it is insanely fun to see and it is a great refresher to the franchise where the villain does actually win twice. Also, I've realized that the show is filled to the brim with queer stuff and it will likely take a separate video dedicated to the show, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rewatch 
the show because I haven't seen the first season since it's come out like what two years ago now and I haven't seen the second season since that's come out and I can remember it being really fucking gay which is mwah. we love gay representation especially Chucky but the thing is there is so much in the show that is just gonna like this video could be an hour long and it's already gonna be like what 20 minutes 25 minutes so next week it's not going to be on Chucky. The week after that, though, is going to be focusing on the Chucky show and how queer that is, which is going to be probably a lengthy video, but we'll see. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching this week's episode of... I don't have a show name for this thing. Thank you for watching the video. Um, if you liked what you see and um, you want to see more, please click subscribe and like the video and watch it again and tell your friends that you saw this random guy talk about Chucky and how gay Chucky is. Um, if you don't do that, I'm going to send Chucky to murder you in your sleep. I'm being held hostage. Chucky is a queer ally. Thanks everybody for watching. I could make him whack off like he does oh, in the film. On. He does that in the film. That's besides the point.